Hi guys, I'm Shrev. I work as a data scientist and um, over the last few months I've just been doing, well, exploring spatial analysis and what I can learn from spatial analysis. So what better topic than to start with Wellington? So this talk is just a very quick run through of what you can actually do with um, open source tools that can deal with spatial data, what kind of spatial data there is, and yeah, just ask me any questions afterwards. So very high level, trying to understand the character of Wellington and can do that by representing it as a space, so the streets, places in Wellington, and so on. And um, that representation, you can then pump through a whole series of spatial algorithms, hopefully generate some insight that hopefully then will tell you a bit about what Wellington is all about. And just, yeah, so basically your insight is a useful, useful abstraction about the city itself and then you actually do the data science down where you get the representations about the space, that's the street networks and so on, and the algorithms that you use. So that's what the talk's about. <laughs> it's spatial data science with open data and open source tools. I should have actually added, I don't use GIS because I noticed there's quite a lot of GIS talks today. So this is just using Python tools. Right, so in terms of data, what do we have? We've actually got loads. There's LINs. Um, pretty sure most people are aware of Land Information New Zealand. They've got loads of surface data that you can get. Um, this is just from the Stats New Zealand website. Some of them are quite big files, but you can download them in any format. You've also got the wonderful Wellington City Council open data um, interface, which you can search for things like council playgrounds. You can search for schools and so on. Again, multiple format downloads, depending on what you're actually using as a software to do the analysis. And you also have OpenStreetMap. I don't know how many people know about OpenStreetMap slash use it, but it's, it's, uh, it's very close to a love of my life. Um, you can uh, query things that you're interested in and it's user editable, so you can also go and add things. Uh, so it's a really fantastic resource. So yeah, in terms of tools, um, as I said, I use Python, not a GIS um, framework, so I use Mainly the top three, so there's something called OSMNX, that means OpenStreetMap Network X. So what it does is it takes street networks and it actually converts it into a graph. So you can do lots of really interesting things with it when you've got a graph structure. Um, Pandana, which is um, really quite nice for accessibility and aggregation analyses. It does very effective and efficient computations over large networks. Um, I'll show you some examples with Pandana. Um, and Jupyter, which is just the classic data science thing of putting everything in a nice pretty notebook that other people can then hopefully learn from. Um, and then a whole bunch of stuff down the bottom, <laughs> including Matplotlib, Geopandas, and Folium for doing some of the visualization and spatial data manipulation. So. What kind of questions can you actually ask of spatial data? Um, so some of the things that I've been interested in are around, you know, what is my neighborhood? What's my locality actually doing for me? Like, does it have amenities that I need nearby? And can I actually access them in more than one way or do I just have to drive to get there? Um, and similarly, do my journeys allow for active transport? Can I walk? Can I run? Can I bike? So these are all very important questions for us as citizens of a city. Um, how we get from place to place. So one of the examples that I've been using is um, accessibility to playgrounds, council playgrounds in this case, as a proxy for how walkable uh, a city is. And here, the two questions that I will very quickly show you um, that I've been trying to answer are, are, well, are playgrounds in Wellington accessible by foot? Can you actually walk to them? Um, and how reasonable is that? And uh, and as Wellingtonians, we all know that it's a hilly city, so we've got to, we've got to factor that into our journeys. <gasps> One minute, no. Okay, very quickly. So these are some of the heat maps that you get out of Pandana. It's an accessibility um, tool. So what that shows you is all the lovely yellow dots are, um, or spots, I should say, um, playgrounds, and the accessibility near them is obviously very, very close. Um, but the closer you get towards green, you're starting to get a bit further away. And then towards blue, you're just really far. You're like five kilometers away. Um, and the graph on the left is in distance, and the graph on the right is in travel times, which you can basically convert it to just um, time it takes you. You can extract that data as histograms or as any um, density plot, whatever you want. You can actually do some modeling with it, which I plan on doing in the future. We're basically telling you um, the typical playground, council playground in Wellington is about 700 meters away and it takes you approximately eight minutes to get there. But it does not, 
factor in the hills. <laughs> and very quickly, this is if you actually um, grab some elevation data and use that to calculate better travel times, how long it takes you to get to a playground. You see all the places around the, the sort of town belt, the hilly bits of Wellington where I live, they become quite far away. Um, and so obviously that's gonna make travel less reasonable, presumably for families that live there. And this is... Oh, good. <laughs> I can just slow down. It's okay. This is not really relevant anyway. It's just, it's just more cool things. You can just say, okay, what's the closest playground? What's the second closest playground? It gives you an idea of what kind of options you actually have when you live in a particular locality. Um, and yeah, that's it. Those are the resources. I'll be nice. I'll stop on time. And yeah, I'll take questions later if you have any.